I have a question for you, and I'm afraid to ask it. I didn't take my Adderall today, so I'm in a chill mood. <laughs> <laughs> so ask me anything. Well, it's just the where you rank this movie mm. is going to change oh. the next hour of this conversation. Wow. Because, oh boy, I just want to know if we're on the same page or not. I and- have a feeling I know what you feel, <laughs> and I'm afraid that I'm... You want me to just say it? You want me to just be honest? No. <laughs> you want me to lie to you? I, you want me to lie straight to your face? Anyone can cook. Anyone. Welcome to Guilty <laughs> Pleasures. <laughs> Cue the <laughs> French music. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's French, <laughs> but we'll go with it. This is just uh, this is just a Zach, Kelsey, and Bowie special over this, here. This feels weird. It feels I've never... quiet in here. It does. You didn't take your Adderall today. Uh-uh. Are you going to cry? What no, was I, I have <laughs> almonds stuck in my throat. <laughs> I felt, I was hoping that I was powering through it. Yeah, no, I'm very, I feel very zen today, which we'll see how long that lasts talking to you about things. So wait, I guess I don't understand Adderall because, so, so you're normally, I thought it was that your brain's normally hyper and you take Adderall to focus it. It, it like zones me in so I can become passionate about something. If I mm. don't, I'm kind of like, why does that clock say 99? What kind of clock is that? Yeah, it is weird. There's a clock in the corner that says 9959, which is just not a number yeah. anyone would ever need. And then I'm like, what's Bowie doing? Oh, I have that same leash. I got a new fidget ring. Like, I'm just like, it's a little harder to be excitable about something. Okay. Well, I think we're going to get you there <laughs> because we're not just talking about a movie. We're talking about Pixar's Ratatouille. Ratatata. And I'm, Rat- I'm going to start this podcast with a bold statement. Say it. I think that Ratatouille deserves to be celebrated as possibly Pixar's greatest film. I agree. Let's go, Let's Kelsey. fucking go. Oh, thank God. And here's oh, the wanna, thing. Oh, can we hug? Let's hug. I know, I'm I coming, know. I'm this coming. is never going to happen. Oh, my oh God. My God. Oh, thank wow. God. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Because oh. I, I'm going to tell you something. The first, like, one or two times I saw this movie, I didn't feel that way. I wish I was like grabbed by the balls and like, <gasps> wow, animation. It actually took me a moment to savor this and enjoy it the way I do now. Some people may be thinking this is a stupid episode for Guilty <laughs> Pleasures, right? Ratatouille won best animated feature. This is part of Pixar's golden age. No one is sitting here and saying that Ratatouille is anything short of an exceptional film. Right. But oh. I think it is underappreciated within the Pixar canon. Oh. Also, it's hot rap boy summer, so we gotta talk about <laughs> it. But but your this- summer, Zach, <laughs> has begun. Am I a rat boy? Are you fucking kidding me? I feel like I'm more of a mouse boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rat boy? Zachary! I, this is huge news. I like cannot only imagine the TikTok of this going viral because you sitting there being like, I'm a rat boy with like a picture of Ratatouille next to you just being like, bing. Like, what about me is ratty? Your tiny little ears, beady little eyes. Okay, I wouldn't say beady. They're, it's like peckish, peckish mouth. Hmm. Very handsome with your new mullet. Thanks. Rat-like. Okay. You're, it's a good thing. Have you not seen Timothy Chalamet? You're He's, up there. People say Timothy Chalamet. I don't think Timothy Chalamet's rat-like. Boy, do you, have you seen a rat lately? Okay, well. For, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen a man? Let me Google rat. Think about Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, yeah. As a human. Okay. Those are rat boys. Josh O'Connor, mm-hmm. number one rat boy. Which is? From Challengers. Correct. Remy from Ratatouille. Number, Number two, two, hot. Yeah. I would argue that Jeremy Allen White goes above Ratatouille. Even uh, Jeremy Allen White is more rat boy than Ratatouille. Okay, so let's let's name all the rat boys and we're going to rank their hotness. Okay. So we have Jeremy Allen White, Timothy Chalamet, uh-huh. Josh O'Connor, uh-huh. Mike Feist. That's uh-huh. the Challenger special. Yes. Remy from Ratatouille. Remy. Stuart Little. Avi. I feel like there was gi- it was giving... Um, there was someone else. There that, was someone else big. They tried to group in, which I didn't agree with. Oh, oh, oh. With. Uh, Barry Keoghan. He's not a rat boy. Zach, you He's have a- glasses. How are you so blind to this? <laughs> Barry Keoghan is like the rattiest boy. You have to be able to imagine them with a rat tail pulling it off. And that's what makes a rat boy. Who's that European guy that starred in um, the Triangle Sadness? Oh, yeah. yeah He's yeah, also yeah. giving rat boy. I'm looking up some more, but I, yeah. you guys got the big ones. Okay, so we have 
Rodent Boyfriends, Gen Z, the impending hot rap boy summer. Oh, Maddie Healy. Oh, <gasps> Matty Matt Healy. Healy. Ew, but we and they also say Kieran Culkin is a is a oh, rat boy. Yes. Which I don't see either. Okay, if I guess you I don't have ima- I don't have rat dar. No, if you could imagine them playing Can you appreciate that? Did you I hear did. what I said? Yeah, it's a radar. Good. Okay. If you can imagine them playing scabbers in Harry Potter two <laughs> yeah. sla- or excuse me, Harry Potter three, uh-huh. he's rat boy. Adam Driver, rat, rat boy. boy. Okay, so now we're gonna rank hottest rat boy. Number one, hottest rat boy. I guess it's Jeremy Allen White. It's he's the having a moment. Yeah. I think Challenger's boy. I, Josh O'Connor, he's my number one. He's my number one. Okay, great. <laughs> I, and then I'm going to say something controversial. Yeah. Barry Keoghan, number two. Think about the roles he's taken, killing of a sacred deer. He's been tortured. Yeah, he doesn't, he's one of those people who I'm like, he's not hot until I see him in something. And then I'm like, and then I'm like, you're so okay. talented. It surpasses whatever society's trying to tell you you're not. Yeah. Is Jacob Alordia a rat boy? No, Dang. too tall. He's more like um, he's giving Capybara. <laughs> <laughs> Him and what's the other one? That's in um, uh, Glenn Bell. Yes. Oh, yeah. well, he, <laughs> you're he, Capybara. He is. Okay, we got a little sidetrack. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about this movie because Rat Boy Summer is upon us. And it's but hot as hell. And it's hot out here. Mm-hmm. And I'm apparently part of it. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> This is you. Yeah, actually, why am I moving the conversation along? This I'm is like, the episode. <laughs> I'm like, why are, why are you denying? You're telling me that I'm in the same sentence mm-hmm. as Josh O'Connor mm-hmm. and Barry Keoghan. Yes, my guy. So if they're number one and two, where am I? You're definitely like top 10. Whoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No <laughs> one's like tweeted this at you or anything? <laughs> I, this is, okay, n- there's no way I'm top. Because, okay, we have them. No, sorry. I'm just going to take a picture of you and post it to Twitter and ask people <laughs> if they agree. Is this a rat boy? Yes. Carry on. Anyway. Hmm. Yeah, but rats, they've been hot. Think about it. They've always been like, they represent New York City. You know, <laughs> they represent the cool, artsy, <laughs> underground pizza, conspiracy, like internet. Like rats have just been culturally cool. Templeton? That dude fucks. Who's that? From isn't he from uh, Charlotte's Web? <laughs> yeah, he's from Carl- from Charlotte's Web. Anyways, rats. Rats. Culturally, in movies, they've been hot. Mm-hmm. Remy's hot. But uh, more importantly, <laughs> to the movie podcast side of this, I do believe that Ratatouille has always been overlooked and underappreciated. Why is that? It came out in the Pixar renaissance. And it was almost this like, oh yeah, another one. Oh. You know, because it was Toy Story, Toy Story 2, Incredibles. Uh, uh, this was sandwiched in the middle of this run. And then right after, th- I think Wally came out either a year before mm-hmm. or after, then you get into uh, Up and Toy Story 3. Oh, wow. So it was just this Pixar can't miss. Emotional. And we talked about this yeah. the other week where we look back like, oh, this is... This is the greatest run creatively that any studio maybe has ever had. Mm. And when I look at Ratatouille, I just think that the world doesn't appreciate it for how truly great it is. It does so much. I think it is not just a movie about food. I think it's a movie about the creative process. I think it's a movie about art. And the challenges of making art within a system that wants to crush and commodify art. Would you argue to say that it is even a little bit about familia? Oh, it, uh, can I r- tell you what I wrote down? <laughs> I want to hear your Magnus opi- a magnum opus on Ratatouille that you probably had while stoned this weekend. Yeah, I forgot. I mean, Fighting Nemo was in that run. There were just oh, so many yeah. great movies. But this movie, all at once, is an allegory for art, a love letter to French cooking, mm-hmm. a sci-fi body control <laughs> movie. <It's> like, <laughs> okay, that's it's, a stretch. It's, no, it's like a body horror. Freaky Friday premise. moment. It's, it's sure. crazy. Yeah. The idea of rat sits on head and controls body. <laughs> that is a sci-fi premise. That's but insane. But with consent. Of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have the subplot of a woman overcoming yes. the patriarchal structures of, kitch- of a kitchen world. Still struggling. You, you have the family drama, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a comedy. It mm-hmm. does so many things at once. Pleasing I, critics, yeah, staying oh my true God. to your family. The idea of, of uh, the critique of art versus the creation of art. Hallucinations. <laughs> I, I just kept feeling so bad for the little chef man because I was like, he must be going fucking mad. He's going fucking mad, mate, thinking he's seeing a rat. 
Oh, Ron you're is. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, I I every time I watch this movie, I'm surprised mm. by how great it is. It makes me cry. It makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I ate before, during, and after watching. What did you eat? So before I had leftover pad CU, Yum. I thought that would give me the noodle sensation. Uh -huh. Not even close. <laughs> I did then make a bagel with Munster cheese because I had to be fancy and egg. Then I had birthday cake homemade cookies, a bag of chips, and a smoothie. Holy shit. Yeah. The smoothie caught me off guard. That's that is in between lunch and dinner, by the way. <laughs> wow. That was after I had lunch. Yeah. It's got you snacking. Like, I don't know um, how much we've talked about, like, food movies on this podcast before. Have we ever done, like, Chef or... Julie and Julia we did. Julie and Julia we did. Yeah, there's something very, um, like, uh, primal in me that comes with... To food movies like I will always watch them I'm always first in line I'm always like a big fan of seeing the way cinema does food which is why when we did all those um like spirited away and stuff for the first time I was like I can't believe I've been missing this entire like industry of movie food porn that I haven't touched but specifically with French cooking which is something that is like full fat full bodied poo pooed on overly expensive I thought they did a really good job making it accessible making it beautiful going back down to the peasants ingredients like it just made me have a full heart as a foodie watching this and as someone I've said this a million times before I literally plan my vacations around like Bourdain shows like that's been my l love and relationship to food has been through cinema and travel and watching something like this makes me want to jump on the next jet to Paris to go get some like fresh baguette bread. I can't afford that. <laughs> that I'd like to. There, we'll talk about Ego, the critic, later, but mm. specifically the one bite of ratatouille he takes at the end with the, the steam coming off of it. It looks so delectable. Mm. It's interesting. I, I want to hear more about why you, what about food in movies you love? Because I'm going to admit something. It doesn't actually do it for me. Are you kidding? I get something else from it. Go when, on. When I'm watching this movie... <laughs> Again, I'm purely looking at it as an extended metaphor for art and making art. Uh -huh. And I think this movie, while it is one of the best depictions of making food uh -huh. and the chef experience, it also is just one of the best depictions of the creative process. You would. Yeah, that's that's all yeah. I see. And so so early in the movie, he he has synesthesia. Are you going to give us a synopsis to Ratatouille? Rat controls guy, <laughs> become <laughs> chef. Well, that makes it sound like a body snatchers <laughs> horror flick when you say it that way. No, uh, Ratatouille is about Remy the rat. There it He's is. living on the countryside mm. in France, and he is not like the other rats no, no. because he has a refined palate mm -hmm. and the greatest nose in the world. He loves to cook. He watches every day uh, uh, Gusto, mm -hmm. which is uh, this beautiful Portly old... Portly French man. <laughs> French man, yeah. Portly old French man who has the famous caption, anyone can cook. And so Remy has been watching and absorbing and learning, and he too dreams of being a chef well, through some... Crazy mishaps, Remy gets thrown, to, uh, separated from his family, and finds himself in Patty. Patty yeah. uh, at the same time, Linguini, a young uh, <laughs> rat boy. <laughs> young rat. Speak of, by the way, Linguini can get it. Hi, rat boy. Okay, all right. Hi, rat boy. Okay. We'll talk about him. He likey in all the right ways. Me likey. <laughs> Me likey. Who would he be as a, as a actor? A, who live would you action. get to play the live action Linguini? Probably the guy from Triangle Sadness. I could see him being with his name? big uh, his triangle mouth, little mouth, big eyes. Ooh. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. I gotta look it up. Carry on. Linguini, he needs a job. He's he's coming in to clean the kitchen. And through a twist of fate, Remy makes the greatest soup that the that Gusto's has ever seen. Harrison Dickinson. That's our that's our live action linguini. That is number one rat boy, and that is my linguini. Imagine him with a curly mop of hair. <laughs> oh, that's that's linguini if I've ever seen one. Carry on. I'm picturing it. I like it. Thank you. Uh, linguini is a young uh, 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 fuck up. He he needs a job. <laughs> he sucks at everything. He He's wants, giving stoner. He wants to clean up the kitchen. He needs he needs a, a gig and. 
Through a twist of fate, Remy makes the best soup that Gusto's has ever seen. Linguini gets credit, and Linguini realizes that I need this rat <laughs> to teach me how to cook. They come up with a system where R- Ratatouille Remy sits on his head and plays him like a puppet. They become a dynamic duo. Yep. Can they take on the culinary world, or will they get busted? Will Linguini uh, take realize that he is the heir to Gusto's, <gasps> or will the mean chef take it all away from him? Oh, my. And what will happen when Anton Ego, the mm. world's most fearsome critic, comes into town? This is Ratatouille. In case anyone didn't know. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Rakakuni. Um, no, I, so we're talking about it as an extended metaphor for art. And this movie, this movie does such a smart thing to make you love Remy and forgive him for everything. What's which that? is that he fucking cares. Mm. So so there's a screenwriting book that's considered a little hacky by some. It's Save the Cat. And it's this idea that you always need to see a character do a nice thing in the beginning of the movie, like, I don't know, save a cat from a tree. If a character does a nice thing, we love them We're forever. And Pixar says, fuck that. <laughs> we need a character to want something more than anything. And that and is flavor. Remy wants flavor. That's all he wants is to fucking eat flavor. And they do such a good job of depicting it. It's almost this synesthesia-esque mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. where he's describing the flavor like jazz. Mm-hmm. And you see, they go into a depiction of it where you see the explosion of the mm-hmm. different flavors playing with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and from that moment, he has this fatal flaw. He cannot let bad food sit. He needs yes. to make it better. He has to make good food. He can. He has a calling And so now we're going to watch him make bad decisions again and again and again. But fuck, I love this guy because he cares about food more than I've ever cared about anything. They take the most, me and um, the dude I was watching this with were trying to figure out like who came up with this. How did they come up with this? And I was like, you have to A, hear the word ratatouille and be like, that is a movie. Go. What would you say? And you're like, yeah. What's the most disgusting? What is the total opposite of French cuisine? A dirty fucking sewer rat. Yeah. So you give him the gifts of the greatest chef. Like it's the perfect black and white opposite. Got to make it work somehow pairing where you're like, this little rat doesn't want to dig through garbage and be like the poison sniffer of his what they call clan. I didn't love that for the entirety of the movie. Calling <laughs> a rat clan a clan. Um but you you get this idea of like he doesn't belong there. He's destined for so much more. He's been given this godlike gift. And that's what I was rooting for was like, you are a savant rat. Yep. How dare you be banished to the countryside to do nothing but sniff for your clan? Like you deserve have your have your coming of age summer in French. Like fucking fuck a girl, ride a bike, <laughs> eat a baguette. Like go be a fuck man. Fuck a pigeon. Go to yeah. Paris, you know? <laughs> Fuck a bitch and go to Paris. Rap Boy Summer! (laughs) There's this moment where he's, he, this incredible action sequence where he's in Gusto's kitchen for the first time. He's trying to get out. He's, oh, how do I get out? And then he finally, the windows open and he walks by a soup that Linguini's Uh. fucked up. And he's like, I don't, uh, well, just, um, okay, I'll throw in a little spice. And then he leaves. He's like, well, okay, if I'm here, it just needs a little cream. And he walks away and then he goes, he does this. Yeah. He snaps his finger involuntarily because he's like, ah, you know, I know what this needs. Yeah. And watching a dude like that who just is like, can't help himself. I cannot help it. He loves food so much. Irresistible. And it, that's what got me thinking about like the message of this movie, right? Is that like anyone could cook? I don't think so. I don't think that that's a true statement. I don't think everyone could be a cook. Like not everyone can cook. For instance, me, I'm not very good at it. I wish I could be, I want to be just realistically. I don't have the palate. I don't have the, um, the, the, the creative brain to think of things that go together. I couldn't tell you what rosemary tastes like. I have no idea how to describe it to you, but I am good as shit at fucking eating it. I'll eat food. On your mother's grave, I will. I'll eat as much food as I fucking can in this lifetime. I think there are people who eat food, and I think there are people who make food. Because often people who make food don't eat the food that they make like the way they make it. So there's a line at the end of the movie where they kind of clarify Gusto's message. Where I think it's in Ego's uh, review, review. And he goes, not anyone can become a great artist. They stop saying cook. They, they The metaphor goes away. They just full on nice. conflate art. Which I do think good chefs, great yeah, chefs it are, is art. are art. but. Not anyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. 
And so huh. this is an it's an anti elitism take, mm-hmm. which is you know French is a very elite, snooty. Uh, snooty. But like the the cooking scene there is especially the classic French. Mm-hmm. It's like well you to be a great chef you have to go to the great school and you have to do the right things and come up in training. And the message of this film is no, actually an anti elitist take would say that there are great meals or. I would argue, great stories Mm. that can be found anywhere. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think, I mean, I'm going to talk about the extended metaphor for art a lot. I can tell. (laughs) I, I, uh, uh, so anyone can cook is an appeal to art itself. And I think coming from Brad Bird, the director of this movie, and from Pixar, this is them reflecting on their own time as an animation studio. So uh, Disney bought Pixar a year before this movie came out. Whoa! I, and I, I don't think that this is specifically about making stuff within Disney, but if you, it, it works, right? Mm-hmm. So Gusto's used to be this great, incredible Classic. institution of yeah. France, the greatest food in the world. Fast forward years later, Gusto is dead. It's an IP. They're running it into the ground. Making freezer burritos. They have Gusto burritos, Gusto's orange chicken, Gusto's enchiladas. They are just like with any great art. Great art becomes IP, and then IP gets run into the ground. It is the challenge of making art within a capitalist world, within the Disney industrial complex. Art becomes commodity. Mm -hmm. And specifically with Pixar, they began as this beautiful, this true artist enclave where you hear the stories of early Pixar about the care and amount of revisions they put into any movie. But as time goes on, there's this temptation to, you have shareholders, you have to make the money. So I think that Brad Bird is looking at what Pixar is doing from a couple different perspectives. Uh One, it is this pull between, do I make great art or do we just become bullshit? Do we just become enchiladas? But also, Pixar was dealing with another thing during this time, which was the idea that animation cannot be taken seriously Ah. because those are kids' movies. Ah. And so when I hear the line, anyone can cook, to me it's like, hey, any art can be great art. Animation is art. Animation Mm. is film. Mm. And just because this is a cartoon doesn't make it any less serious. If we put love and care and the right ingredients and the right craft into it, this is just as deserving as anything else. And and even still, animation is kind of, it's not taken mm-hmm. as seriously as other uh, uh, filmmaking crafts. Yeah. I mean, that was beautiful. So much of me wonders if it was just a high guy who heard the name Ratatouille <laughs> and was like, what if a rat could cook and he makes ratatouille at the end for a critic? <laughs> but no, that was that was really deep and insightful. And wow, you put a lot into this podcast and I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you think Linguini is fuckable? I think he becomes fuckable. Mm. And I'd also like to point out that I read a comment on one of the past podcasts that says everything I talk about turns into something sex related, which I detest. Zach asked me if I thought he was fuckable, okay? That, I that didn't was, bring it, it was, up. It was me. <laughs> it was me. I think he becomes fuckable because of his confidence. Nothing to do with the fact that he inherits a restaurant, <laughs> but that doesn't hurt. <laughs> I just think, like, he comes in this bumbling, kind of stonery Vespa goof teen, and he finds out how to love the fact that he doesn't need to be the star of the show. It's not really where, where his heart's in. His heart is in Colette, the chef who he knows how to cook and he wants Remy to succeed. I think him being a better friend, a, be- a better restaurant owner is what makes him hot. By the way, Linguini is voiced by Lou Romano. No relation Hilarious. to Ray. Looked it up. Uh, <laughs> he's a voice actor. I he's He just, that's what he does. He's a voice actor. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I, you for, I mean, and Patton Oswalt as, as Remy, also fantastic. Yeah. And it makes me so happy knowing that Patton Oswalt has that Disney fortune. <sighs> yeah, um, get that residual, maybe. But it reminds me like, oh, right. Voice actors are... Full-time that, actors. That, that, <laughs> that, that, sh- that is a specific skill unto itself. Yeah. Um, My there- favorite is following the ones on TikTok who do um, voiceover for like ads. Like, oh, yeah. Side effects include heartburn, diarrhea, dis- 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 and it's they film themselves doing it in real time and like go follow their day of a voiceover actor. They're really cool. You should look at one. There's a, a moment at towards the end of the movie where Linguini has to tell the entire <laughs> kitchen mm-hmm. like, hey, it's not me. 
there's a rat who sits <laughs> on my head. And pulls my hair the way I like it. <laughs> and that's, he's been the chef the whole time. And that's Amore. There, that's like real dialogue that, that a man in a yes. booth has to say. Yeah. And I he he sells it. Yeah. He and the way that they believable. turn it and they keep it a secret too with like the review I thought was very I was like how are they gonna how are they gonna bring this home how are they gonna tell all of Paris that rats are cooking their their Michelin meals but they keep it like this little fun secret thing for just them to have. So Brad Bird directed this movie mm. and uh, he directed The Incredibles, uh. Incredibles Two, oh. Mission Impossible. Uh, four. Oh my god! Ghost Protocol, a good which one. is fucking incredible. Yeah. One. He like brought Mission Impossible back. Wow! And so I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was surprised watching it. This movie has fucking incredible action sequences. Yeah, the cinematography fucks out of control. Yeah, it is. First of all, I think this is the only movie on Disney Plus that has a first person shooter sequence. <laughs> 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 there is, there is that's a good point old lady with a shotgun yeah. and it's like video game uh, uh, yep. like POV of yeah. the gun like chasing yeah. around the rats there is what feels like a theme park ride where they're he's flushing down the, sewer. the sewers the first scene when when Remy enters Gusto's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's really intense in there mm -hmm. like feet stomping by him yes. and he gets hit by a door and mm -hmm. goes through your, it's like rat vision yeah my favorite is when he's going through the walls and he sees a mousetrap with cheese and it's so subtle but the way his like eyes go like oh, and he like scoots around it and then keeps going it's just like that subtlety of so much and by doing so little in this action yeah he just brad bird um he directed tomorrowland which put oh. him in director jail ah indefinitely Rude. and it sucks yeah. Because he's as good as good as it gets. That's like, incredible that that is what did him in. Incredibles. D did they have three of those? Two. And two wasn't as good as one. Well, it never is. Uh, well. He also directed The Iron Giant. People love that. Oh, yeah. Little boys. Little love boys that. love Iron yeah, Giant. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's just uh, he is, I think, one of our true great directors. And especially when you look at the caliber of talent mm. that... that uh, uh, Disney had during that time with him and Andrew Stanton, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm playing uh, Pete Doctor. Like it is just wild that so many talented people came, were working together and making yeah. each other's stories better. Wow, um, <laughs> you really aren't on your pills today. No. <laughs> I was thinking about something when you were saying that. Just Sorry. looking at me going, wow. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't my Kelsey. <laughs> no, I was thinking when you were talking about like all the incredible people that had to come together to make something like this happen. I was thinking about how I just, it just dawned on me that there is a newly rated Michelin star restaurant in Tampa where I'm from called Lilac. And the chef there, whose name is Chef John Andrew or something real white and white man sounding, he helped design the ratatouille for this movie. <laughs> the, the, the dish. Yes. The dish at the end. Yes, because they, they obviously stylize all their food off of like watching real chefs cook. And so they hired a bunch of famous chefs to help make the food for the food that's in this movie. And he was one of the guys. That's fucking sick. I only know that because I went over the holidays and they tell you that when you sit down. And you're like, huh. Wait, so can you eat the ratatouille? They don't serve it at what Lilac. Do they don't That's, serve it. it. It's how they introduce them. It's strange. I don't know. You want me to talk to them? I want them to cook it for me. You can do that with binging with Babish. He's he's Babish. got that. <laughs> binging with Babish. How do you say it? Babish. Babish. No. <laughs> no. Binging with Babish. His name is not Babish. It's not. It's Babish. What happened to that guy? Babish. Yeah, what's he up to? Made a fuck ton of money. He's chilling. Yeah, he made that ratatouille look good. Because you ever had ratatouille? I can. It has bell pepper. Are you allergic to bell pepper? I'm severely. Since fucking when? Kelsey, if you want to kill me, <laughs> if you feed me bell pepper, I will be out of commission for days. People know <gasps> this is so boring to our audience because they know it. it's been so talked about. I found out two things about you today that I never knew, and I, you're one of my best guy friends. You, you you found out two of the most – people are like, what's the other fact? Yeah. You found out two of the most known things to me that I like – I don't even bother talking about it because they're so known. Wow. I don't know you at all. <sighs> Do we need to go on a vacation together? We did <laughs> in December. <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. I guess I need to ask more questions about you as a friend or something. We're That's making wild. new memories. Yeah. 
Anyway, the food in this movie also slaps because French cooking uh, historically has been very like poo pooed upon in um, like modern um, cuisine, like foodie world. They think of they, they poo poo on French. They poo poo on French for being too boring, like oh. too old school, too stuffy, too like you said, very by the book. You believe you have to come from this. You're not a great chef unless you can nail French cooking. Interesting, but it's very like. To some people, boring, lacking flavor, lacking diversity behind the plate and in front. But uh, I think this brings a, a humanness to French food, especially with the way that they show it's made with such it's love It's funny and that you say a humanness. Because ah, it, it, it's a rat. <laughs> but that's what it. Pixar does so well yeah. is they tell these deeply... Oh, and this fucking pissed me off because I was going to say they tell these deeply personal and specific stories that then feel universal and big. And right now we're recording this pretty soon after Inside Out 2 came out. I haven't seen it. Uh, it is immediately the bi- mo- the highest grossing movie of the year. Is it great? I haven't seen it. <gasps> and, and, and I'm not trying to poo-poo on the movie. I'm sure it's great. I'm excited to see it. But Pixar recently came out and said after the quote-unquote failure of Turning Red and Luca Ugh. and uh, what was the other one? And Soul. They said, we're not telling specific stories anymore. It was a panini. No one can see any movies. I agree. So Turning Red is a movie uh, that is, I think, a the lovely. funniest movie maybe they've ever made. Wow. Uh, it's, I know. That's, I know, a, that that's a, a bold statement. Bold. That's kind of a wrong yeah, thing to say. Crazy. That movie fucking rips. Yeah. It's so good. But they're like, well, this movie must have not done well because it's about a young Asian girl going through puberty. No. Luca is about a young gay boy's story. Like, eh, that is not the reason that those movies did well. Well, one was We Don't Talk About Coco. Coco. Uh, that's Disney. Oh, wait. No, you're right. It is Pixar. And that one fucked? That one That fucks. one did really good. Yeah, that movie fucks. Huh. We love Coco. Interesting. Um, wait, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it is Disney. Pixar. Yeah, Pixar. But, but it's Disney Pixar, right? Yeah. Um, but so they've 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 looked at this and said, oh, we're gonna stop telling personal stories. We're only gonna tell universal stories, um, which is a way of saying they're gonna tell white stories, right? Which is also like the anti what this is even saying. It's like go get creative, go get stories from everybody. Don't I agree. Make it for everyone. And, and I think what they've done so well in the past is tell very specific stories because the specific is where then you get these universal feelings mm-hmm. and emotions. And it just sucks knowing, like, granted, some of some of their sequels, Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, have been some of the best movies they've made. But when you look at the Pixar Renaissance, those, those were all really weird, crazy, bold, adventurous, original yeah. stories. Yeah. And so now for them to say, we're not sure about movies like Turning Red and Luca and Soul. Oh, and Inside Out 2 just made the most money of any movie Ew. in a year. In a week, it made Ugh. more than Dune 2. What? In a one week. Maybe two weeks. Wait, is that just because parents are like desperate to get their kids out yes. of the house and into summer? Don't sleep on animated movies, y'all. Wow. So then they're like, okay, great. We're just going to churn out sequels forever and ever. And that it <sighs> breaks my heart because it's, it's yeah. the, the end of an era. Wow. I, I don't know that I've heard amazing things about Inside Out 2. Yeah, I haven't. I, I've been busy. Doing, what have you been doing? <laughs> Running a company. Launching a streamer. Cool. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about Anton Ego. Mm-hmm. I think he is one of the great... <gasps> spooky, spooky, spooky man. Dude, spooky man. He looks so spooky. He looks like um, the guy from Despicable Me. Oh, Gru. That's what fucking Gru wishes he were. Yeah. He's more skeletor, more scary. Like I'm, I. That's what I think I look like when I wake up in the morning with my dark circles <laughs> on my. That's how self conscious I am about my dark circles. I went, that man is me. I am that man. I think he's one of the great movie villains. Yeah. Uh, voiced by the amazing Peter O'Toole. That's mm-hmm. Lawrence of Arabia up in this bitch. Oh. Incredible Shakespearean Throwing actor. It back. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like to have the gravitas of his voice, yeah, and the the physicality of mm. his like little specter like body. Mm-hmm. Um, he he's barely in the movie, and then is introduced in the second act break. Mm. So he's really just the third act, and he comes in. I think he writes a letter, and he says, "You've been playing without an adversary. Ooh! That's not fair." <gasps> Not how the games are played. But who said? You have, and it's like so good. He's like, you've been playing this game 
You haven't been playing it against anyone. Oof. I'm here, motherfucker. You've been playing with the wall, bitch. Time oh. to meet the other arm. Do you think we're movie critics? Have we talked about this? What we talked about is this movie uh, critic or comedy, but I don't know that we really are. This made, this made me not want to be a critic until he is changed because he's wrapped back to his childhood. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we all just want to be wrapped back to a nostalgia and a feel good hug. And like, isn't that what we're doing or trying to at least? I'm sad not as many people cared about the episode about Brink. I won't take it as a personal <laughs> offense, but like. This movie will do well. People love Ratatouille because it makes you feel good. So he, in his speech at the end, he says that he has an easy job. It's not brave to be a critic, which I agree. It's very easy to shit on things. It's the easiest thing in the world. It's fun. It's 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 drama. Everyone comes around to mm. to, to circle around to watch yeah, you, you pick something apart. Channels. You're not doing anything new or f- fucking smart. <laughs> <laughs> do you watch any of those? Only when they're about me. Shut. Of course I do. Um, so I and that'll end up. I've in one never of their been on someday. one. S- do some spices so I can be in one. Careful what you wish for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. He says though the work of a critic is important when he may not even use the word important when it is in the defense of something new, and that the job of a critic is to stand by something new that the world is not ready for. In this case. A, a rat cooking food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, but, they still ain't ready. <laughs> uh, maybe we won't be ready yeah. for that one for a while. Yeah. Um, they or do you their, think they were trying to tell us something? They cleaned Has their this paws. Has already happened? They cleaned their paws. They did. Um, he walks on his feet. But that a, what truly what a great critic does is defend the thing that the world is not ready for and extol its praises. And That's so, a lot of big words you just used at me. Uh, talk nice about stuff. Be, be me nicey. So I think that at our best... We are. We do that. And I love that they named him Ego. Come on. Come on. Come on. The So he is this incredible boss level, this boss uh-huh. battle. We've already said it. Remy makes the ratatouille. Mm-hmm. A peasant's food? Yes. Anyone, Just vegetables? Anyone can cook. <gasps> they give him a bite. And so Anton cuts it. He takes a bite. And then... <laughs> I don't even know what music they play. It does this crazy vertigo zoom dolly right into his face, cuts back to a memory from his childhood. Yep. He opens the cabin door. It's a rainy day. He's holding his bike. He's clearly hurt himself. His mom sits him down and makes him a warm bowl of ratatouille to make his day feel better. And this one bite brings him back Mm -hmm. to this memory. And that moment makes me cry. Every single time I watch it, because it is, again, I'm viewing it through the power of art, which is that yeah. the reason you and I are sitting here, the reason mm-hmm. we like making stuff, the reason we like talking about stuff mm-hmm. is because when we were a kid, mm-hmm. when we needed it most, mm-hmm. we saw something that made us feel, it made us feel. We're all trying to get back to childhood. We're all mm-hmm. trying to get back to that sense of like, you know, that's why it's hard to watch our parents get older. That's why it's hard for us for change in general is like we don't like getting away from the discomfort. We don't like getting away from the memory of something that makes us feel safe. And for so many people, food is that thing that makes us feel safe. So like what is the link between food and memory? Like especially as mm. children, like what is it about this? You know, for me, it's fluff and nutters, right? Like fly, fluff and nutters will instantly bring me back to childhood, going to Adventure Island with my dad in the summers, like sunny day, lots of sunscreen, like there are specific tastes that have ingrained a sense of safety and a feeling of feel good. And I feel like we've, we've just red dyed everything. You know, we've, we've just put sour Skittles on fucking everything. And we've, we've lost our sense of like nostalgia with food, but there's something very powerful about food and memory that I think that's why it makes you cry. It's because we're all just longing to get back to that feeling of like being hugged by our parental figure, yeah. being fed something we feel comforted by. I'm so glad you're here because I wouldn't have talked about food at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also <laughs> chowing down on Rainy was so kind to give me pork um, pork belly Lay's chips. From Japan? From Japan. And actually, they I don't know where those are from. I don't know what language that is. So hard. And you can only eat that. I tried to eat a bunch at once and I was like, no, no, no. You have to eat one every like... Five minutes because the flavor is so powerful. Wow. Anyone can cook. Anyone can cook, bitch. It, it's, uh, I, I cry at that moment because it is a reminder of what great art can do, what it can do to me and what I hope 
something I make can do to others. Mm. It is that like, if you can make something right with the right intention and mm-hmm. care and craft and and luck and alchemy and all of that, you can make something that transports people to a fundamental elemental emotion mm-hmm. in their life, mm-hmm. whether it's a memory of how they felt when their mom helped them after they scraped their mm-hmm. knee or the fear they felt as a kid. Mm-hmm. And, and Ratatouille as a movie, I think more than any other Pixar movie, hits that emotion. It gets to it. Yeah. The reason why I think this is such an exemplary Pixar film and maybe why it's forgotten is I think it's the best third act of any of their movies. Oh, it's so, it's chaos, bro. It ends so well, whereas many of the Pixar movies, weirdly, that we remember are all great premises, great mm-hmm. setups. Adventure. So, like, Up, it's the greatest first 10 minutes of any movie of all time, mm-hmm. right? We remember that. A little bit boring in the middle. I Yeah, I think. Not it, my favorite I Pixar agree. movie. You and me are on the same page okay. there. Toy Story, like, all of them have these fantastical, incredible setups. Um, and, uh, by the way, follow through on it. I think mm-hmm. I'll, I... Like Wally, the whole first act is what makes that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ratatouille, it's about that feeling that mm-hmm. it that it amounts to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I I think it. Everyone's listening. Like no one's arguing with you. <laughs> we all agree. You're playing with the wall. We need a critic in here. Someone who we, doesn't. Everyone agree. thinks the movie's great. Yeah, Zach. yeah. We need someone who. I love can it so. Us. I love Do it. Do we have any fun facts? We sure do. I want to know. I don't. I'm curious about animated fun facts because they're always very interesting. This just made me want to get like I'm going to Disney soon, and I want to get <gasps> Ratatouille ears. You should, right? You should dress as Rat Boy. Oh my God, Rat Boy Summer. <laughs> Y'all ready for some fun facts? Fun facts with the Zach's back. So they kept pet rats in the studio oh, in the hallway for over a year. Oh, so that animators could study the movement, their fur. Their noses, their ears, paws, and tails. I just imagine them running fucking wild. Like someone being like, ah, it's back. And they're like, no, no, that, that's, that's zero, zero, one, four. Don't <laughs> step on them. This is so funny. They they really struggled to do marketing tie-ins for the movie because no food companies wanted to be associated <laughs> with a rat. How did they do it? I guess they didn't. Damn. They really set themselves up for that failure, though. That's, that's on them, you know? Um. Uh, which, by the way, I saw that at one of the Disney's, there's a Gusto's to go, <gasps> and like you, can, you don't do fucking Gusto's takeout. The fuck is this? No, they, that's that's giving frozen enchilada. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. That's like what the movie. You need to against. sit down and have a fucking meal with your family. Um, there's a scene where the head chef is wet. He he gets he. Okay, Zach, who's the one bringing <laughs> it up now? Internet. He falls into the water okay. with a massive heart on. Um, <laughs> and uh, do you say that guys are wet? N- never mind. I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> but like different. For funsies. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they didn't know how to animate that scene. So they put someone in a chef's suit and threw him in a swimming pool <laughs> <laughs> to see what parts of his body stuck to him. Okay. I got a quote from Anthony Bourdain. Stop. My daddy. Go on from the grave. What do you say? He called this his favorite food centric movie. I've been posting a lot about Anthony Bourdain lately. If anyone's been following me on Instagram, but I posted the other day that like white people became a hundred percent less interesting when Anthony Bourdain died. Like we've <laughs> just really everything started to go downhill after him, and I agree. And I quote: "They got the food, the reactions to food, and tiny details right, down to the barely noticeable pink burns on one of the characters' forearms." I thought it captured a passionate love of food in a way that very few other films have. Wow. He gets it. God, that one hurts the most. That one hurts the most. Huh. Huh. The Linguini learns that he's Gusteau's son, born out of wedlock. That makes him the first Disney full-length animated movie character of illegitimate, quote, parentage. (gasps) All prior characters were either orphaned had both parents married and living, or had one living widowed parent. He's a bastard. He's a bastard boy. Oh, we love to see it. Him and Jon Snow. Love it. Holy shit. That makes sense. I also, I want to know if there are any other Disney. There's got to be a shotgun. There's guns in other movies. Yeah. What, Bambi's mom. But not like that. But not no. like that. If they would have done that to Bambi's mom, that would have been so bad. That would have been People would have been very upset. They're already upset about that whole thing, but yeah. Uh, veteran Disney animator Victor Habush. Not Habish. Oh. 
Uh, he worked on Lady and the Tramp, 1955, <gasps> Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians. Wow. He worked on this film. Or That's no, cool. no, he did not work on oh. this film. Uh, <laughs> what a fucking cock tease. But he called this the best animated film since Pinocchio. Well. That's crazy. There's been a lot of good stuff. I don't know that that man's thinking straight. I, I'm just curious before we end this, what is your, if I just go best Pixar movie, go. Probably Ratatouille. Really? Yeah. Or Finding Nemo. Yeah, What's yours? I, for a long time, my my holy trinity was mm-hmm. always... Finding Nemo, Wally, Ratatouille. I've never seen Wally. Oh, Kelsey. <laughs> I love me some Wally. I got to watch it. Space freaks me out, man. Tell me more. I just, uh, not being able to breathe, claustrophobia suit, space alien. It's just, bruh, I would rather fucking die than have to go to space. What if I told you that he's a robot so you don't have to worry about that? Great. I'll watch it. There are people, but you don't really. They're not the. But do, don't they humanize him? Aren't they going to make him like a human and make me sad? He's oh, going to break down. And I'm gonna, yeah. I would love to watch Wally. All right, let's go watch it. Um, but what's funny, where every time I think about what my favorite Pixar movie is, I don't even consider the Toy Stories because it's just yeah. they're, they're in their own. They're Interesting. In, they're like, I, I can't. That's even... such a bro thing. This. It really is. And I'm so sorry. But like, Toy Story, Toy Story, the trilogy or whatever being. The best is always said by dudes. It because is. it fucking is. Yeah, sure. It. I don't know. It didn't do it. Did it do it for you? No. I, what it's, are you this, about? this might be new information for you. We but can't like, end the sh- episode like this. <laughs> Cut this out. I'm just saying. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just saying what that are you this doing? is this is a true fact, and I hate to say it because it's always all over the internet. And I'm like, do you ever see any girls in there in that conversation? <laughs> no. Ah. Think about it. Ah. Never heard me say it, and I'm always right. <laughs> Something to think on. Do something to suck on. I'll suck on it. Now we have to decide why should people watch ah, this pleasure? Good idea. Um, I don't think you should unless you are fully um, feasted because you will be hungry. In fact, why don't you do a night over with your pals where you make the dishes from the movie and you do that thing where you start with the entrees and you start with some bread and butter the way he does and then eventually get into the more finer, refined things. Get your spices out. Have a date night. Get some fucking wine. Make some ratatouille. Try. We're, we're going to do a, a cookbook club and ratatouille night. That would be so fun. Maggie got mad at me for watching this. And I'm like, it's for work. I'm sorry. Uh, like, got it. Oh, sorry. We got to watch it. Uh, be because she's like, we have a plan. I'm like, I will watch it again. Don't you worry. I feel like people already know why you feel like they should watch it. But maybe say it again in a more concise, small way. <laughs> it's the single greatest depiction of the joys of making art wow. in a movie. I, I like I think about the the scene where Remy makes the soup for the first time and it's this rotating shot with jazz playing <laughs> and he's throwing different things <laughs> in no, and it's possibly. it's just about the joys of creation. When you're in that flow state, baby. Yeah. Get like me. Yeah. It's just peak Pixar. And and if you haven't seen it in a long while, I think it's re it's worth a rewatch. Totes. If you have seen it. It's worth watching. I know again. Garrick was mad he missed this. This is we're we're personally attacking Garrick yeah. for leaving for one week. Yeah. We're doing this and holes and uh he's he's upset. Yeah. And these would be. these both of these movies mean a lot to him. Yeah, well. That's what you get for being famous. That's what you get for having friends other than us, Garrick. <laughs> yeah, Rat Boy Summer begins now. I'm at Rat Boy on all the things. <laughs> I'm at Kelsey Dare on all the things, and I'm Garrick Bernard on all the things. Till next time. Everyone can cook. Anyone. I made it sound like a horror film. 